Hi guys, it's Matt from Max on UK here and continuing our theme of sort of house building and architectural styles, I'm going to look at another type of way of building a house. Now at the moment we've looked at two different types of doing a very, you know, very simple house and a slightly better detailed house, um, but both of them are very square. What if your house isn't? Now if you have a complicated floor plan, one of the things you could do is add it in as an image here so that we can start drawing around it and I'm going to just give you some tips on how you could draw around it and depending on the shapes that you've got. Now the easiest thing to do would be to either find or draw some splines in order to do it. Um, I'm just going to use some prefabricated splines here that will allow me to get the outline of a, a complicated shaped house, not particularly complicated but it's going to be a nice square house but with a rounded porch. Okay so I'm just going to edit this and then width say eight centimeters, eight hundred centimeters. So it's eight meters wide. Um, maybe a little bit more. Maybe say fifteen hundred wide. And then height say so it's going to be quite deep. So it's going to be about um, there. We go. It's going to be a nice big posh rounded house. And then I'm going to create myself a circular spline because this is going to allow me to have the rounded front that I want and I can just adjust its plane so that it is you know along the same sort of axis I'm just going to move it so it roughly meets there and then just zero that so that it's definitely where it needs to be so radius of 200 centimeters so the entire thing is 400 centimeters across giving me a nice four meter porch it's going to be a very posh house and then I'm going to use something under our scene objects here called a spline mask. And if I select that, it's a bit like the ball object in 3D. It allows you to either combine or subtract or something like this. And I'm going to use it to union. Okay, you can A subtract B or add an, add an intersection and stuff, but I'm going to use a union. Okay, and then I'm going to select my two splines and put them in there. Now you're going to have to adjust the axis because that's along the Z axis, which isn't quite what I wanted. So I'm going to change it to the Y and that will give me a nice combination of the two. There we go. Nice rounded porch that that will give me. Then in order to get this to the shape that I need so I can start using it in 3D, I should put it in an extrude nerves. Okay. And there we go. We get a nice base. So under the extrude at the moment, it's going in the Z direction so I'm just going to put that into zero and then I'm going to increase this so how high shall we have it shall we give ourselves some nice tall ceilings in our room so let's say a three meters tall there we go and that gives us our shape and we didn't have to do any nasty polygonal mesh around here afterwards and it's all done for us cool so then what can I do um, if I want to start editing this and moving into you know doing other things well I can right click on the extrude and you can either make it editable or you could do current state to object which I think is a good tip because what that does it creates a second copy so that if I just hide this one then I have access to this if I ever need to go back to the splines but I have access to this polygonal mesh um, that allows me to you know start editing and changing the polygons of this face okay I'm actually going to delete the two caps because I don't want them at this point because I'm only going to do the first floor and then I'm going to show you a second way of easily creating a or duplicating a second floor so there we go so now we need to start looking at how to maybe add some windows let's do some windows on the front now in other tutorials I've used the knife tool and I'm going to do something similar again so I'm going to go M and L to give me the loop although it doesn't have to be loop and now what I want to select across here is I can just click and it gives me access to this tool now I can choose in a percentage where I want it if I want it at 50% and they can subdivide and so on and so forth but the other thing I can do is I can increase the number of cuts and that equally divides where along that plane along that polygon there where these cuts are going to go and if I increase it to three or four you know imagine that sort of thing that could be quite nice so that I now have five separate sections in which to have two 
very nice windows. And then I can do the same thing here, click that, change that to four, just press tab so that it moves along. And there we go. We have more easy cuts without having to worry about you know using percentages to get that in in different places and you can you know change exactly where one of those is if you particularly wanted it i'm just going to put that back to what it was so the new knife tool is incredible in this and then i'm just going to do the same thing here i'm just going to increase it to two just so i've got some nice loops all the way around that will work on the top and bottom of my windows okay so using the scale if I just loop select those, I can scale those up and then I can just move them to the top. There we go. And there we have some nice places for some windows, okay, which can be there and there. So as I've done previously, just very quickly, I'm going to do this. So M and T to extrude backwards. Okay, and that gives me some windows. And then what I could do, which could be quite interesting, is I could subdivide those as well. So if I right click and subdivided, there we go, we've got four windows. What if I did it again? I have a whole load of nice panels there. And as I've done in a previous tutorial, I shall do M and W and untick preserve groups to just shrink those in, M and T to just extrude backwards to give me that. I mean, eight centimeters is a bit much, so it probably only needs to be about, you know, two centimeters, because it's not going to be very large. There we go. And we've got some nice tall windows there. What about the door? What should we do there? So, you could make it a porch or you could make some lovely windows around all the outside, but we're going to need somewhere to put a door. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I shall M T for extruding and I shall extrude backwards. But that doesn't give me the nicest of shapes, does it? So as before, I've done in other tutorials, zero extrude and then move them and then using my scale tool I can flatten them so shift scale gives me a nice flat surface where I could put the texture of a door and maybe you could put bricks around here or you could put individual windows around them I don't know it's entirely up to you but that was quite quick in order to just do a basic floor there we go okay not too bad what if I wanted a second floor, okay? And I want it to be exactly the same. Well, if you want it to be part of the same mesh, what you can do with the polygons, Command or Control A, whether you're PC or Mac, and select all of your polygons. And if you right click, you've got something called clone. Now this clone can create one or two copies. Ah, oh, let's go for something really posh. Let's go for two. This, this house is going to be huge. And then you can choose an offset. So how tall did we make our um, our house? If I just did apply, there we go. Nowhere near, nowhere near tall enough. We made it three meters tall. So if I did it 300 centimeters, it's still not quite enough. Okay, so let's go 600. And there we go. Okay, we're turning into a doll's house here, aren't we? But it's not too bad. It allows you to sort of control that and you can choose one and then maybe just 300. And there we have quite quickly a second floor added to our house. So cool, that's it. But the problem with it at the moment is that it's separate. Now, as I've shown in another tutorial, if you go to points mode, select all, you can optimize it. So because those points are exactly on top because of the way I've done the calculations, click optimize. And now if I move it, it will stretch the house up without a problem. Okay, cool. So it's got two doors, but maybe this uh, front one can be a balcony. You know, we can sort of 
choose how that works. And the one thing that you've got to remember when it comes to building a house or, or doing something like this is that it doesn't matter that not everything is built out of one object. So imagine if I wanted to produce a quick iron railing type thing, but I want it to be really quite simple. I can just put that straight across there. So it doesn't have to be all made out of one. You don't have to sit here and think, how on earth am I going to make one you know, polygon come out of here and make this decent? You don't have to. So I can control and use all of the shapes available to me. So let's just go to the cylinder. How big is it? Radius of about three. So radius of about, say, two centimeters. So it's going to be quite small. Height, two meters tall. That's a very high railing. So let's just say one meter tall. OK, and then move it so that it's almost. Yeah, there we go, just below. Very simple. And then I can go to my MoGraph. I can go to my cloner. I can put that in there. Oh, I'm going to have to readjust it on there, won't I? Uh, maybe I can make life easy by holding down Alt on my cylinder and then creating a cloner that way. There we go. So rather than have to readjust it, I now have it where I need it to be. Six copies, but I don't want it going that way. I think I want it going in that way. OK, and then I can just move the cloner so that it is inside that curvature. And I can angle that around so that it creates that. So say 24 centimeters, but make sure that's at zero, maybe 25. There we go. Maybe 26, maybe 25 and a half. <laughs> there we go. But quite quickly, we have created a very simple, very easy you know, barrier that allows me to give a little bit more detail to my little house. And I'm just going to create another one of those cylinders, and I'm just going to rotate it. So I'm just going to extend that across and up. Boom. OK, Ooh, a bit too long there. There we go. And that wasn't too bad at all. You don't have to spend hours trying to make one polygon mesh fit everything you needed to in order to get you know, the right sort of shapes. Like the roof, for example, you know, we could do it entirely separately in a completely different object because it may be easier to do that than it would be to try and figure out how we're going to make this work. So let's give it a roof. I'm going to start as I normally do with a cube and get it roughly the right sort of shape. And get it where it needs to be. There you go. Perfect. That's, that's how roofs look on houses, isn't it? Okay, maybe not. Fine. So let's see what we can do to sort this out a bit better. So using a shape like that, and then ground shading, and I'm just going to increase the number of polygons in a couple of directions. There we go. That's not too bad. And then I'm going to make the cube editable. Then grabbing the lines up, boom. And because I'm going to make this quite a posh house, it's going to be one of those ones that does that. OK, roof. That was easy, wasn't it? But what about this? What shall we do about that? Now, there are a couple of different things that you could do. I'm um, just trying to think about what the best shape would be in order to get that. I think we're going to need to kind of use some form of cone. It's probably the best thing to do. There we go, cone. So let's create a cone. Let's move it where it needs to be. Let's move it up. Um, <laughs> now, the radius is 
that, which is no good whatsoever because it was 200 wide. So the moment I do that, I now have a nice little rounding I can put on it. And I'm just going to plop that where it needs to be. But I'm going to make it slightly bigger so that it overhangs just a tad, maybe to 40. And we can increase its height so that it matches something a little bit more like it needs to. That's very odd, isn't it? Um, on the top view, I shall make it fit that. OK, so it's got a lovely round ceiling there, but it's um, not exactly what I was after, really, is it? So what we're going to need to do, ooh, we've got some issues going on there, which I shall fix in a moment as well. Um, one thing you can do with this is you can slice it, um, which will be really useful for us in a minute. So if I was to give that a nice 180 spin, what I can do is I can make my cone editable, and then I can select the polygons all on that face. So I'm just going to hide the other roof for the moment. I'm just going to call that roof and then hide it. And then I'm going to go to this and I'm going to select my polygons there and extrude. M, T and extrude. And there it fits in as though it was meant to be there. So my, my issue that I have at the moment with that roof is that it is bending from here, which I really don't want it to. So I'm just going to fix that slightly by using the knife tool, which is M and K. And I'm just going to ping that across, um, which sort of fixes that, which I shall just solve in a second. But then I shall just work that way. OK, so I've got some polygons there that are, are warping their way out and what I really need is that to meet this one. So in its you know X direction I can see that that particular point is at 765954. So I'm just going to copy that, take that and paste that in. And then I'm going to look at the height which is 640 and I'm going to paste it in there. Boom. And that solves that one. And then going over here, it's going to be the same height, so I can steal that. And this one is minus six, uh, 765. Sorted. So just zooming out a bit and then modeling, looking at that house. Okay, in this video, we have looked at how to change the base, how to use the loop uh, plane cut tool in order to give you equal segments across and how to duplicate and how to use separate objects to create different bits of your house. I hope that was useful guys and that you can pick up some of those tools that will help you with your own work and I shall see you next time.